Hello, Carmel and Terry, in alphabetical order. This is Don Cumming, and as promised, I'm going to put some of my movies taken from 1966 to 1991 on a video for your edification and amusement. Please forgive the poor quality of some of the images. For some reason, my wonderful camcorder won't produce 8mm movies very well. If you'd like to see the originals on a movie screen, all you have to do is to come around to 12 West End Place, Elizabeth, and Anna and I will shake up a couple of Shirley Temple cocktails or whatever and show the films to you. Meanwhile, remember that we're looking forward to a visit from you while our bodies are still at the temperature of 98.6 degrees, which means before we're in the cold, cold ground. How about it? It's been a long time. Now, also, where are we? We start off with July the 10th, 1966. You were visiting us with uh, Fiona, uh, who would be four or five at that particular date, and Tom was about three. This, of course, is in our backyard. Moira wasn't born yet, and I can't tell from this picture uh, how soon she's expected, but you know the exact dates. And we're visiting you up in your old home. I should have it down here, but I don't. I don't have any very good close-ups. Unfortunately, I don't always uh, take the kind of pictures I should. There's Kathy, of course. And you, you know your own kids. There's Tom. I repeat, this is March 1967. Now, in June 1967, Fiona, the five Flanagans and Elizabeth, including, of course, Moira. As cute as could be. Naturally. I hope you get a chance to show this to Tom and the others. That's our son, Alec. Now, only a few days later, you're back in our backyard, the whole bunch. This is July the 4th, 1967. I'm sure you know most of these people. That looks like Jimmy McGowan. And there's Jack McGowan in the background. Gay Byrne. Vince Byrne. That's my brother Mac. Eight years older than me. There's a glimpse of uh, Carmel McGowan. And you know who that beautiful little girl is.
Now it looks as though everybody went to uh, Sunday morning mass and uh, you drove them back and forth. That's Betty Knidel, K-N-A-J-D-L, Maggie's great girlfriend from uh, Fordham. Maggie didn't go to just one college, you know, she went to Fordham. Oh, there's an angel if ever there was one. <laughs> I don't know why we put her in the in the dish pan. Here's Kathy again. Yes, here you go. Cold Spring Lake, Bloomingdale, New Jersey. The five Flanagans and the five Cummings. I repeat. 1969, so you can now figure out everybody's age if you want to. That's Maggie. Kathy and Alec. Sorry the detail in these the video pictures isn't better. They're much better on the movie screen, but the uh, camera, the movie cam the video camera just doesn't seem to pick an awful lot up. So we put up with what we have. All right, now we're going to skip one year and five months. And uh, we will, we visit you in Phillips, Phillipsburg. This is June the 20th, 1970. We're going to the old swimming hole. Kathy at the left, there's Maggie and Anna. This is the now time. July the 13th, 1975. You two are guests at our house. There's Don, my son-in-law. Maggie, there's Kathy, she was out visiting us. Roy, Catherine's uh, husband. There's Carmel McGowan at the left, my son Alec. I repeat, this is 1975. There's my sister Catherine, Jimmy McGowan. Don Cachato. Uh, Jimmy and Carmel were going back to Ireland, and this was a farewell party for them. There's Don again, and there's their oldest son, Tommy. There are the Broses, B-R-O-S-E. Uh, we'll see uh, her husband in a minute. There he is, Gay Bros. You know this distinguished gentleman and his distinguished wife. There's my daughter Maggie and her husband again. And there's their youngest, James.
Kimmy McGowan. There's Marge again. Kimmy and Carmel left uh, for Dublin, I think, just two days later. To February the 8th, 1986, the 40th anniversary of uh, our uh, marriage. Republican, uh, no, 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 that's right, it's more. I, I, have, all happiness to Donald and Anna. I'm shy talking into this uh, sponge. So I move around. Well, what are you putting it in front of me? <laughs> Back with you. <laughs> all right, I got it now. Miriam, would you like to say a few words into this? Uh, no, I wouldn't know what to say. You're going to hold it? Here, let me. Here's Carmen. Carmen's going to. All right. I want to say we're just having an absolutely marvelous time here getting to know Muriel and Dennis. Dennis, good grief. And all I could think of was Duncan. But anyway, um, we have had memories of absolutely great times around Donald and Anna's table over these years, 25 years. So it's marvelous to be part of this celebration with them. And the trouble in the town, you're upset. You're worn out, go inside, go lie down, maybe it's indigestion. Goldie, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> Do you love me? You're a fool. I know. But. Do you love me? Do I love you? <laughs> Wee story, and then Carmel can sing. Wee story, Carmel can sing. I just got one wee story, and it's about uh, a married couple. This couple have been married uh, a certain number of years, as they say. And this evening, the man was home sitting down, and his wife came in, and she burst in and said, uh, she said, uh, don't you notice something different about me, darling? And he said, no, nothing different about you, nothing at all. And she said, well, surely you must notice something. Won't you take a guess? And he says, OK, you have a new dress. And she said, no, that's not it. And he said, OK, you have a new hairdo. And she said, no, that's not it. He said, I give up. What is it? Oh, she said, I just joined civil defense. I'm wearing a gas mask. <laughs> Oh, Michael McGilligan, one fine day, got a lot of money from the USA. All through the death of his Uncle Joe, he got a million and a half or so. This is Michael, I throw a fancy ball down at the old ancestral hall. Invited the neighbors, everyone, put to join in the music and to have some fun. Ah, oh, they all went down to me. McGilligan's ball, where they had to tear the paper off the wall to make room for all the people in the hall. All the girls and the boys made a devil of a noise at Mick McGilligan's ball. Ah, 
the neighbours came from near and far. Milligan arrived in a motor car. Oh, Miss Riley, bless her heart, arrived with the family in a donkey cart. Big Rafferty arrived in an aeroplane. Oh, they'll never see the lights again. And there was the shout when the two old skins arrived at the gap with the two Miss Flynn's. Ah, they all went down to make McGilligan's ball. Tear the paper off the wall to make room for all the people in the hall. All the girls and the boys made a dimple of a noise at Mick McGilligan's ball. I had taken pictures of uh, Terence Flanagan, otherwise known as Terry, otherwise known as Terry, but it, they didn't come out. Now, it says up here, Rex, and I think they will come out now. You have grown. You have grown. You have grown old gracefully. <laughs> Simultaneously, that my mother and dad had struck up a relation. My mother was now living in the United States, and that was the early 30s. And he decided, heck, Anne came home, and they got married. Otherwise, he was about ready to be on the boat, and that would mean that I would be an Australian now. Well, Tommy kangaroo now. You are you Billy Bondo? <laughs> Imagine, I wouldn't like to be an Aussie, though. You know the Aussies are sweethearts. Mm. And there was the other link, because my grandmother had been born in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. And those kangaroos flying around and everything. <laughs> oh, do the kangaroos water. fly? Anna, I think you've got that wrong. The kangaroos, kangaroos fly. don't fly. Oh, they jump. Well, they or whatever, they're, they're jump. almost the same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Exactly. Well, Carmel and Terry, as you notice, this thing is all mixed up. My movies have used... Uh, come to an abrupt end, which is par for the course. I hope you enjoyed looking at them as much as I enjoyed making them. And I hope to see you very soon indeed. Toodaloo. <laughs>